Hey guys, this is IX Roll at IX with Rollout Reviews doing another casual DX Common Rider Ghost unboxing. Today we have another eyeball extravaganza. A bunch of new icons here, so let's take a look at them. First, we have Tutankhamun Damashi here, King Tut. We have a two pack with Beethoven and Nobunaga. And then finally, we have Billy the Kid. So we got a pharaoh, a samurai dude, a composer, and a cowboy. That should be fun. Anyway, we're gonna go in order of release here. So from right to left, getting started with Tutankhamun. All of the icons come in a uh, very similar packaging to the one we saw with Robin earlier here. Uh, not a whole lot to go on about uh, as far as, you know, the back here. It just has a picture of the Tutankhamun form itself there. This is one of Spectre's icons, so it has the two horns there. It looks pretty cool. His face is uh, a little bit difficult to, to see here, but um, it's a couple of sickles facing towards each other. I feel like a lot of people focus on the blue, rather than the black, so they don't really see that very well. It's very confusing if you just look at the blue. I guess some people have suggested that maybe the blue could be some kind of Nile River plant, but uh, yeah, it is a couple of sickles on either side forming the eyes, and I think that's pretty cool once you look at it like that. So, let's open this up. I do believe all of the icons come uh, with Gamba Rising cards, which uh, I really, really enjoyed. <laughs> Uh, the art on those are really, really cool, so I'm excited to get more here. But uh, I'm also very aware now that these things have a lot of tape. They really don't want anyone inside of these things. I guess that's a good thing, so that they're not, you know, stolen. But uh, Spectre. Spectre doesn't listen to that. He's going to steal as many icons as he wants. Similar to uh, to Newton, we, we don't really know where this icon came from. Spectre just sort of has it, <laughs> um, like upon his debut, or at least uh, an episode after his debut. But there really isn't any uh, explanation to how he got this thing. All right, the card should be inside here. Yep, there it is. Ooh, that looks very, very cool. But... Let me take the icon itself out here and get the packaging off to the side. Very nice kind of uh, blue color here for Tutankhamun. I am probably going to need to bring the camera down, so let me do that really quick. There you go. All right. Run back around very quickly. All right, so let's open up this here. Uh, you got the instructions, which basically uh, tells you that it is an eyeball with the button, and you can put it in a belt. So that's all kinds of fun. I'm sure we needed that. Here is the Gamba Rising card, which once again has some very cool art on it. On this side, you of course have Spectre in his base form, and then on the other side, you have him in Tutankhamun form, which is kind of a like a turquoisey blue there. So that's very, very cool. I hope I get a lot more of these things, because uh, <laughs> if I get the other two that I got from Robin and the driver, I'll have quite a collection of these things, and I, I can't wait for that, because these are really cool. Even though I can't use them, um, they're for uh, like a uh, arcade machine in Japan. They're still very, very cool. Anyway, here is the Tutankhamun icon. It's number 11, so there's a big jump in uh, numbers here. You know, uh, Ghost pretty much has, well, I'm sure he's going to have like 1 through 10 without any breaks, although he did get Edison stolen from him. Um, and then kind of Spectre's icons start from there with uh, Nobunaga and Tutankhamun 
and whatnot. But yeah, there is the face, very, very sparkly for this DX icon there. A couple of sickles facing each other, like I said. Press that, the uh, attack is kind of a, a sickle attack. And then you have the uh, blue tinted specter lens there. And then 11, because it is icon number 11, apparently. So that's all fine and dandy. I really like the, uh, the blue color on this. It's kind of a, like a cyan blue. Spectre sure has a lot of blue forms. Of course, he has his main form. He has this. He's going to get Houdini, which is kind of a, like a navy blue color. Um, so yeah, and then Nobunaga, which is purple, kind of in the same spectrum, you could argue. Anyway. Of course, it activates Spectre's standby jingle, because this is one of Spectre's icons. At least to start with. Who knows if Ghost will steal it at some point. Kind of like a, like a techno Egypt jingle there. <laughs> kind of funny sounding. Um, yeah, the the LED in there uh, was kind of a a blue color. I actually have no idea. I wasn't paying very, paying very much attention. But uh, whatever the case, I really like the jingle. So there's that. I actually have um, the translation for it on my uh, phone here. It says. Pyramids are triangular, credentials for royalty. So that's all kinds of fun. A little factoid for you. Pyramids are, in fact, triangular. Have no idea what that means. Uh, maybe there's something lost in translation there, but uh, yeah, it's something vaguely about Egypt and Tutankhamun being a, a pharaoh and whatnot. Anyway, here's the final attack. Kind of a purpley color. Tsutsun Kamen! Omega Drive! Alright, there you go. There is the Tutankhamen icon. Oyazumi! Oyazumi! Get the uh, card in there here. That looks very, very cool. And it's got to be centered. It's probably not centered anyway. Oh, well. Anyway, let's swiftly move right along. Next up, we have a two-pack, which is something they're going to start doing, apparently. Beethoven and Nobunaga. Um, otherwise, it's, it's very similar as far as the style of the packaging goes. Uh, just sort of two of them squished together. So that's kind of neat. Anyway, Nobunaga here has like a couple of shotgun weapons crossed across his face. Uh, very similar to uh, the other samurai, Musashi, uh, but instead of swords, he's got guns, because uh, Nobunaga was kind of a warlord who revolutionized the battlefield by incorporating gunpowder into his uh, into his fighting tactics and things like that. So he uses uh, the shotgun form of Spectre's gun hand. And then you have Beethoven there. He's got like piano keys on his jacket there, um, kind of like, I don't know, what are the things on the end of a cello that you tune it with? It's got those on the side of his head, kind of like hair, and then some strings and some notes as eyebrows, which looks very, very cool. This is one of uh, Ghost's forms, and this is one of Spectre's forms there, respectively. So that is very, very cool. Beethoven, of course, was a composer. Uh, uh, he wrote songs and things. Who wrote, who wrote Beethoven's Fifth? I, I don't know. Anyway, uh, let's, uh, let's open this right up. Um, hopefully it won't be any more challenging than the, uh, single pack icons here. But who knows? I'm sure it's going to have just as much tape, if not more. 
having trouble with that for some reason. Oh, there's a, like a long strip of plastic at the bottom here. You know what, these are actually very similar to the uh, later Crossfight beat em on packages. The uh, uh, Crossfight beat em on ES stuff. If you watched any of my beat em on reviews, you sort of know what I'm talking about. This is becoming a pain. For some reason, I can't quite get my blade underneath this plastic here. There we go. We're almost there. The struggle is real. I think this one actually comes with two cards, if I remember correctly. Two icons, two cards. I always forget about these two pieces of tape here on the sides. Hopefully I won't uh, forget that for the uh, last icon of the night here. Let's take the icons themselves out. And then pull out the cards here. Okay, so. The instructions are probably fairly similar to all of the other icon packs. Yep, not a whole lot of new going on here. Twice as big because there's twice as many icons, but aside from that, nothing super special. The uh, cards actually come in like a little booster pack deal here. Um, let's see if there's an easier way of opening this. Yeah, there you go. So, oh, that's kind of neat. You have uh, two more cards with Spectre and Ghost on them, and they kind of mirror each other, which is very, very cool. So here is the, uh, the Ghost one that comes in this set with the one that comes with uh, the driver. So slightly different there. In fact, you know, these two almost match each other a little better, seeing as, you know, they're in kind of the same pose there. And then here is this one uh, that comes in this pack with the one that came with Tutankhamun. And then on this side of this card, you have uh, Nobunaga there with the uh, Gan Gun hand in gun mode. That's some pretty cool looking art. And then on the other side of this one, uh, you have Beethoven form, Punch and Fools, which looks very cool. He's got kind of a long flowing coat as opposed to sort of a, a, the parka that's on most of the other forms. So that's very, very cool. Once again, I'm uh, coming up with quite the collection of, of these cards. I can only imagine by the end of the year I might have uh, like a bona fide deck, and that'd be very cool. Uh, maybe not quite 52, but uh, you know, a nice little stack. Um, the ones I'm missing, you know, like uh, Edison and uh, and you know Musashi and things of the like. Those apparently are packed with like fish sausages and and other kind of snacks over in Japan. So unfortunately, I probably won't be collecting any of those. It's just kind of strange that those are packed with food products. I don't know. Anyway, so here we go. Here is Nobunaga and here is Beethoven. I suppose we'll take a look at Nobunaga first because it shows up first in the show. It's a really nice purple color, like a very deep purple color. Tutankhamun was icon number 11, and Nobunaga here is icon number 12. Like I said, you got a couple of, I don't know, they kind of look like flintlock pistols crossed on the front here. The attack there is a kind of a gunshot attack. And you have the blue tinted um, iris there, because it's one of Spectre's icons, once again. And then number 12. So, let's put it in the driver. Oops. Bachimihiro! Purple, once again. It 
Was that cheering? It sounded like cheering. Anyway, I once again have the translation for exactly what that said here on my phone. Uh, it says, My way of life, Okihazema. Okihazema, I believe, is a, a battle, or is, a, is like a, is an area, or a country of Japan, or something like that. Um, maybe a, a town, or, or it's somewhere, somewhere in Japan, and uh, one of Nobunaga's, if not the most influential battle that uh, Nobunaga fought in is that, Okihazema. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right. Um, but yeah, and then my way of life, I guess, I don't know. His ideals of some kind. Uh, he's expressing his ideals. Um, I don't know exactly what the uh, the subtitles that I watch say. It says they take some liberties, of course, and I feel like it it works a little bit better than that. But uh, again, maybe that's like the more direct translation. So maybe something's lost in translation there. Anyway, special attack. Nobunaga! <laughs> ah, it's fine. We don't need Oyasumi. But yeah, there is... There is Nobunaga. Moving on to Beethoven. This is icon number six. So, uh... Yeah, that's skipped at least one. I think Billy the Kid is number five. I have no idea why Beethoven came before Billy the Kid in the show in that case. But, uh, yeah, one thing I haven't really been showing off with these icons is the uh, pins on the bottom. Got a couple of pins there that activate uh, different buttons in the driver, which is what activates the different sounds. But, like I said, the face for this guy is some strings and some notes forming, like, angry eyebrows, so that's kind of cool. Sort of a nice uh, silver color here. Um, it's a little more plasticky than some of the others. Uh, slightly translucent in a way. Kind of vaguely similar to Edison. Um, like that. Uh, kind of like a pearly silver here. But uh, press it there and you have a final attack, which is a bunch of music notes there. You have the uh, gunmetal gray ghost iris, because this is one of ghost's icons, as I said. And then you have number six there. So, let's put it in the driver. Ghost jingle, of course. <laughs> I like that one a lot just because it's silly. Um, so yeah, kind of it also kind of purpley. There's a lot of purpley colors going on here. But yeah, Beethoven, let me look up exactly what that says, even though I, I believe I know what it says pretty much uh, by heart here. But uh, it says, composition, destiny, zon, 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 like Beethoven's fifth. So that's very, very cool. Um, he kind of like controls physical music notes and throws them at people in this form, sort of conducts them in the air and then flings them at people. So that is sort of cool too. I really, really like this one. Just, just like I said, because it's silly. It's a little more silly than some of the other ones. But uh, there is the attack. He's very excited that it's Beethoven. Beethoven! Here we go. Oyasumi. Gotta get my fill of Oyasumi there. Anyway, there is Beethoven, and there is Nobunaga. It's a fun set, and I think it costs just as much as two icons would together, which is kind of interesting. Um, 
it seems strange to me that they would make two packs when like this is the same price as individual icons. I don't know. I could be wrong. Maybe it makes sense in some some fashion. Maybe they didn't think uh, Beethoven would sell as much as Nobunaga for some reason. I don't know. Either way, they're both very, very cool icons. Let's move on to the final one, Billy the Kid. This one is kind of interesting because they're like heroic icons and, uh, you know, icons of great people throughout history. But if I remember correctly, Billy the Kid was an outlaw. He was like a bad guy. Although I guess that depends on who you ask because technically Robin Hood is also an outlaw. But uh, I guess Billy the Kid is just like the most famous cowboy. So, although, I I'm sure I could think of a couple others, but, uh, oh well, here we go. Here we have Billy the Kid. Here's what his face looks like there. He's actually got, like, a cowboy hat on. It's just, like, the hood with, like, a rope around the edge of it, making it look like a cowboy hat, but that's very cool. He's also got, like, a, a cowhide poncho on and like bandoliers down the side of the coat so that's very very cool i really like the way this looks this guy uh, showed up in uh, the last episode at the time of this recording and um he did some very cool trick shooting there so his face is like a, a revolver with some bang bang uh flash flashes on on either side forming the eyes so that's very cool but otherwise the packaging is pretty much exactly the same it's kind of a, a copper color here the icon itself but you'll be able to see that better once we rid this of the packaging hopefully we can do a little bit better with this one than we did with the last one <clears throat> no promises though Just bad. Just bad with tape. Tape and myself are not friends. I have to apologize for this, uh, you know, exceptional quality commentary going on here. I just can't help it. Anyway, here we go. Here is the icon. And then once again, we have our uh, collector's card in here. Ghost Ore again. This is like our fourth card with Ore on it. Uh, the instructions likely exactly the same as all the others. So nothing to talk about there. But here we go. Here is our Gomberizing card. There we have Ore. Uh, holding the uh, gun gun saber in gun mode there which is appropriate because we've got ourselves a gunslinger icon here then on the other side we have uh uh billy the kid with the gun gun saber combined with the bat clock the bat clock Another uh, a ghost gadget which we'll be taking a look at later here i have that as well so yeah, there you go. Add that to the stack there. Let's actually take a look at all of the uh, the ghost ones together. Well, there's only three. Not quite four, but that's still quite a lot. Do these do different things in the game? I guess so. This one says passion on it. Uh, okay. Um, and then the other two, including the one that came in this set, say finisher. On it so I guess these are like attack cards and these are like this is like a power-up of some kind maybe I don't know what does this one say burst um, attacker technical tricky I don't know I have no idea how this game works but here we have the icon itself so this is number five the missing number five once again this shows up after Beethoven but uh, it's numbered before him for some reason yeah, like I said, kind of a nice uh, bronzy, coppery color, I guess. Um, yeah, it's not quite as plasticky as Beethoven, but uh, I don't know, it still looks nice. Although, <laughs> that sounds to me like uh, plasticky is nice, I guess it's not, whatever, you know what I mean. Anyway, Billy the Kid! 
Like, if you can fit Billy the Kid on there, why couldn't you have fit Robin Hood on the Robin icon? I don't know. Doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me. But anyway, there's the face. You can see it clearer there. You have like a six shooter. And then uh, some, you know, effects on either side. Like it's firing, forming the eyes. Then you have like a... Uh, well, this one's very similar to Nobunaga, actually. Except it's really more of like a shotgun. Like a double-barreled shotgun than uh, like a flintlock pistol. Then you have the gunmetal gray. Um... Iris there for Ghost. This is one of Ghost's icons, but you probably knew that at this point. And uh, it's number five. So, yep, there you go. Ghost's jingle. I love that guitar riff so much. That, that's just a really cool jingle. I like the way that one sounds. Um, yeah, it's got some uh, gun noises in there. Uh, let's actually take a look at uh, what it says here. I don't really know this one very well. Um, it says, never missing bullseye. Zakyung, bakyung. It's some like onomatopoeias at the end there. <laughs> so like I guess the it's like uh, bullets ricocheting off of metal or something. I guess I actually want to listen to that one again so that I. Oh well, it's not gonna show the face. I screwed up. Whatever. Yeah, Zukio Bakio is like onomatopoeias, I guess. But uh, yeah, there's that. Oyasumi. Oyasumi. Or Oyasumi, rather. It sounds like me, but I believe the word is Oyasu. Oyasumi. So I don't know. Anyway, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe it's wrong. Who knows? But anyway, there is. Billy the Kid, or Billy the Kid. I like how, how he says that one too. Anyway, let's actually um, take a look at every single icon up until this point. That should be fun. There'll definitely be a lot of eyes here. So first we have Ghost there. Then we have Spectre. So our two base forms. Then, of course, we have Musashi. Then, Ejiso. Then, uh, what's next? Robin. Is that still on screen? All right, let's just uh, <laughs> get this situated. Then, we have Newtong. Then, Next is uh, Billy the Kid, I guess. There you go, Billy the Kid. Then we have... Beethoven! Then next... You know, it, it's a big jump. It goes from 6 to 11. We got Tutankhamun. And then finally, Nobunaga. That... <laughs> that is a lot of eyeballs. Let's actually put uh, Ore front and center here, just to make him uh, feel a little bit special. But yeah, there you go. That is a lot of eyeballs. And that is just the start. That is just the first two waves, and there's a lot more where that came from. Let's uh, put down some of the uh, collector's cards here, too, just for fun, in the corners here. You can kind of see them. Oh, well, that is certainly a display. So. That is about it, guys, and this is IX Roller IX, signing off.